Welcome to MAKE, a course taught at the University of South Florida. This tutorial discusses the electrically erasable programmable read-only memory, in short EEPROM, on the Arduino. We will discuss how to use the 1 kilobyte EEPROM on the Arduino, we will discuss how it works, and we will also use a new C++ item, the data structure, called struct. Before we discuss the EEPROM on the Atmega 328P chip, let's have a look what uh, types of memory is on that chip. First, there are 32 kilobyte non-volatile flash memory. That is the part of the memory where the uh, program is stored. So when you upload your sketch to the Arduino, that's where the code goes. Then we have volatile RAM, random access memory, static random access memory, SRAM. There are two kilobytes that are being used to store variables and arrays during the uh, program execution. And then there are 256 bytes that hold the registers. So we have 32 general purpose registers and then we have another 224 uh, registers that just hold all the general operating parameters for the uh, input-output ports and the analog comparator, etc. Then finally we have one kilobyte non-volatile EEPROM. This uh, EEPROM that can be used to store data that um, should be retained while the Arduino is shut down. So this is ideal for user parameters, game scores, this type of thing that needs to be retained until the uh, Arduino is powered up again. The two non-volatile memory types, Flash and EEPROM, are based on the same technology. EEPROM was developed first and it can be programmed one byte at a time. The penalty for that is, is that this type of memory is very slow. However, EEPROM is better suited to store data during microcontroller operation. Flash, on the other hand, is a type of EEPROM which allows faster writing processes and this is achieved by writing entire data blocks at once. This makes it ideal for storing the program code which is usually a larger file, so time is saved when this file is transferred to the memory. It's interesting to know that Flash has only 10,000 rewrite cycles and EEPROM has 100,000. That means if you upload a sketch for 10,000 times to the Arduino, then you have to replace the Atmega chip. With the EEPROM, that moment occurs after 100,000 operations per memory cell, um, that may seem a lot, but if you compare it with the 16 megahertz um, operating frequency of the processor, uh, 100,000 is actually can op can be over in a very short period of time should one accidentally rewrite the EEPROM in the main loop. So care needs to be taken that the EEPROM is only used for data that is not constantly changed during every loop. That makes it perfect for storing uh, user settings or, for example, to collect uh, sensor data. It's interesting to know that uh, both the Flash and the EEPROM have fairly long data retention times. Simulations yield that the data retention time is about 20 years at 85 centigrade and even 100 years at room temperature. When it comes to writing and reading the EEPROM, uh, one could use the native Arduino EEPROM.h uh, library that is provided with the Arduino IDE. So you could just go to the uh, pull down menus and then go to the library folder and uh, select the EEPROM.h library and it would then be included into the sketch. However, the disadvantage of this library is, is that it only has two commands in there, one for writing a byte and the other one for reading a byte. And so this is good if you have values that are uh, between 0 and 255, uh, then it's easy to store those in the EEPROM. But if you have multi-byte variable types like float numbers or integer numbers, then it becomes fairly complicated and there's a lot of bookkeeping uh, where which variable is stored and one has to take care of uh, keeping track of the memory addresses and so forth. It's much better to use uh, C++ structs, uh, which are uh, data blocks that 
consists of a number of individual variables and this entire data block then can be written to the EEPROM in one setting and it can also be retrieved from the EEPROM in one setting and stored back into such a struct from which one can then uh, extract individual variables. So it's much better to do uh, the writing and storing in, in data blocks and for this it is much better to use the AVR EEPROM.h library that is provided by the manufacturer of the Atmega 328p chip and it's also included in the Arduino IDE however it is uh, hidden uh, so one cannot see it in the uh, pull down menu but if you include eeprom.h at the beginning of your sketch then um, you have commands available or methods available with which you can read and write an entire data block. Let's have a look at the definition of these data structures, those structs and essentially um, the, the syntax is here it starts out with struct and then you define a name for that struct and then you list the data members so these are the variables that are that that make up the struct and it closes with wavy brackets and if one likes one can directly instantiate objects uh, based on this struct definition so the whole thing is very similar to a class from which we define uh, objects except that here the only members of this class are data members so there are only variables in there and no methods. Here's an example so we name the struct product and then we have uh, two data members in there an integer variable named weight and a double float named uh, price. Down here we instantiate three of these uh, data objects one named apple then here two more banana and melon. So if you wanted to access individual data members in these struct objects then it would be like with uh, 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 objects defined from classes from class definitions one simply has a, a period between so apple dot weight would be the would would give access to the weight data member of the apple uh, object and so forth here for bananas and melons now it's time to discuss the arduino sketch we start out with including the AVR EEPROM.h library. This library is uh, located in a folder called AVR that is part of the Arduino package. Then we define a struct called settings and we have two data members in this struct. One is a float number called setting1 and the second one is an integer called setting2. Now we instantiate three uh, objects based on this struct, uh, user1 setting, user2 setting and user3 settings. Then we define a variable called settings size and here we use the uh, method size of which gives us the number of bytes that it takes to store one of those structs of the um, settings struct. Then we go into the uh, setup uh, function. Here we start out by opening the uh, serial communication at 9600 baud. And now we fill those uh, three struct objects that we instantiated. So we save a floating point number into the setting 1 for each of the users and we save an integer number into the setting 2 for each of these users. Now it's time to write. Here we use the EEPROM write block method that comes from the AVR EEPROM.h library and the first parameter of this method is a pointer to the struct object that's supposed to be written then a pointer to the uh, address in the EEPROM starting at which the struct object is written into the EEPROM. So the first one we're writing here we have zero we have zero as the address because the addresses of the EEPROM count from zero to one thousand and twenty three. So the first one is zero and then the second one is the 
uh, size of the of the struct, right? Because that's the, the second block, so we need to go the number of bytes that corresponds to the uh, struct object up in the memory space of the EEPROM. And then the third one is placed at two times the setting size from the bottom of the uh, EEPROM, because that's the, the third block that we're storing. And then the uh, third parameter of the uh, write block method, that is the setting size. So this is the size of the data block. Okay, so we write all these, uh, all the three objects, and now they are in the EEPROM. And so the final part of the sketch is to read them back out. Here we use the EEPROM read block method, and that has the same uh, parameters. Then all we have to do is print each of the data members to the serial ports and so we, that we can distinguish them I put here these headers for each of the printout. Now in the main loop I put nothing because I definitely don't want to uh, overwrite the EEPROM a hundred thousand times and ruin my add mega chip. So up here we only do everything once. So what we will do now is we will first upload this sketch to the Arduino, uh, then we will run it, and so we will see the uh, uh, printout on the serial port, and then I will uh, comment out uh, all this up, up here that we use to write the uh, uh, blocks, and we will run it again, and then you will see that it still prints out the uh, data that we saved here in the EEPROM. Okay, so I uploaded the sketch and now let's see what's coming back from the serial monitor. Uh, whenever one starts the serial monitor, the chip is actually reset, the Arduino is reset and the uh, sketch runs from scratch. And so we see here that all the user 1, 2 and 3 settings were stored in the uh, EEPROM and with the read block we extracted uh, these settings again. Okay, so what we do now is let's comment um, these out. Okay, so now we only have the read block uh, commands left, and so I'm uploading this now. So it's uploading, done, and let's see what's coming from the serial port. Okay, so these here are the lines that were written after activating the serial port after the reset and so you see that all the data is still there. So this seems to work nicely. Um, the Even after resets, the data is still in the EEPROM. This concludes our tutorial about using the EEPROM on the Arduino. Thanks for watching.